you know, before I get started with this reaction, I have to do an intro and typically I don't do more than just a few seconds before we get to the video. But what I want to share with the Kings and Queens is recently in the last few months, I've been bestowed blessings greater than my mind could have ever imagined. God has been moving in my life in a way that I can't really explain. And recently, I've found myself going back to church for the last month and a half after years of never, you know, really going. Found myself going back to church. It was one of those things where I was having a conversation with myself and I was wondering, like, wow, am I more afraid of the devil than I am of God? So I found myself connected to that you know, lost identity of trying to figure out where am I really with God in my spiritual journey. And while I'm still on this journey of trying to learn and try to figure out what's best for me and my family moving in the direction of God, this video came across my feed and man, was it right on time. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I promise you, it's for you. Got the serious look just like y'all got. That serious intense look. Because he's trying to find his way, he's trying to figure it out. It's frustrating. I'm trying to listen to God. I, I got my own flesh and my pulling me here, my own desires, my family, my friends, all these things is, is, is distracting me from this truth. And it's difficult to give in, especially when you're young, man. But if you can go through it, you'll come out like gold. If I can go through the fire. They don't want to go through the fire. They want to the lotto and go to Jamaica in the Bahamas and do their own selfish thing. But he said, if you wait till I exalt you, I give you desires of your heart. But it's difficult to wait because everybody in a hurry. Technology, it's, it's fast. It's in a hurry. They're angry. They're frustrated. They got time. They're on the cell phone. They want to text message you. Y'all in the same car. You're going to text message him. He right there. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Everybody hurry. I don't know where they going, but when they get there, oh, they're going to be sorry. The faster you try to get there, that career, that money, and you're going to figure it out that, man, it was the journey. It was not the destination. You're going to hurry to get there, to come up, to be this, to be that. And when you get there, you're going to feel discouraged more than you did before you even started to get there because it was the journey the people that you didn't stop to talk to like me at check -in. the people at the gas station you was in a hurry to get there but it was the journey it was the gas station it's checkers it's the journey not the destination because the destination is steadily evolving we always growing in wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's always evolving. And we can never obtain it because it's, it's steadily, constantly evolving. The more humble you be, then the more you can be fulfilled with the truth. But when you think you got it and you're on your way, then you're going to get less of it because can't nobody talk to you. Mm. You can't stop. Come on. You're in a hurry. It's a difficult thing, but you got it. I see the intensity. Especially being with him. He ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> then he talking to me. And you seeing it, you like, wow. You already amazed at his skill and what you your relationship, but he's showing you the journey. That's very important, <laughs> man. <laughs> he's showing you how to relate, connect to the people. I would say this. It's a man with pushing a basket. This man right here, they brilliant though. Don't, don't look at the outside appearance. I've seen him in action. He was pushing a basket. And I was under the bridge. And I was talking to everybody except him. He was the last person I talked to. He said, why didn't you talk to me first? He said, I should have talked. He said, don't you ever Passed by a man pushing a basket and don't acknowledge him. I, I never do it in my life again. I talked to the person pushing that basket. How's your day? How you doing? I talked to the homeless people because they said, be careful how you entertain strangers. And most people that, that came off the street and they got their career together, they won't even let you know that they've been through it. They try to act brand new. They, it's a testimony. What you go through, what you go through, it's for us to inspire somebody else. 
It's for me to pull the weak ones up. It's for you to pull the weak ones up. We don't go through this because of our own selfish reasons. We go through this and give them a testimony of how far God has brought me. It, it was never about me. I thought about me. Why I'm going through this. He said, back up, man. Who are you going to inspire? Who are you going to tell somebody about the glory and the grace of God if you don't go through it? Get out of yourself. And once I step back, I've been seeing the deep things of God. And so I don't play with him. Mm -mm. I don't ask him for a lot. Mm -hmm. I just say, give me my, my portion for the day. I don't want a lot of things. Just give me enough that I can deal with. Amen. He said, I give you a... But, Fulfill your bond greater than you can ever ask. I know what you desire. I know what you need. But Lord, give me my portion where I can be grateful. Where I can be thankful. They unthankful. They unholy. They ungrateful. They got a job. They don't want the job. They got 40 hours. You can't work on Saturdays. You can't work on Sundays. Now you got three days. You, they always complaining and griping and murmuring. Stop it. Mm -hmm. He said be grateful with the little things. Mm -hmm. And wait and I, I put you there. But he's going to put us in a place where they appreciate me in the job. I don't hate going to work. I got to watch my back. They backstab them. You're making the money, but I can't go to the job because I got to watch my back. They hate us. Put me somewhere where I love going to work. I can get up. And they appreciate my work. And I blend in. God say, I'm, I'm going to put you there. But if you want to get it, go ahead and get it. What do you think about haters? That's a part of the, the balance in life. They hate. They don't know why they hate. Tell them why they hating sometimes. Mm. They don't know they hate. It's just standard thing. They get angry. He taught. Every way we taught them. They hate. They don't even know why. Because they don't about to teach them. They don't about to take time to let them know why they're doing things they're doing. And that's the whole purpose of life. Let them know what they're doing wrong if you see it. I didn't always knew I was doing wrong. What about when they showed me long suffering? What about when they forgave me, but I can't forgive him? He did. He made a promise. I made a promise. I didn't fulfill it. They didn't go off on me. Well, I got to go off on him because he didn't fulfill his commitment. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. You got to teach. They don't know. The only God they know it's through you, through your experience. They don't know about church because you can't go to church because it's a business. And all the church people, it's a clique, it's a club. And they done forgot about God. It's a business. Look here. It's just the world. Ain't nobody being bold and talking about God because don't pray in school. Take the prayer out of school. All these things. It's the world. We're getting in a time where God is not popular no more. And if you talk about it, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. I believe in this. I don't care what you believe in. Let my spirit speak for me. Let my action. Amen. But it was a time Amen. when I was just a hearer and not a doer. But you got to balance out. You got to go through the fire in order to be a doer too. You're right. going to be a hearer, then you're going to be a doer. But don't let people... Throw you off your journey. You can't beat nothing. To, it's between your relationship and God. They can't understand you all the time because you're trying to figure out your way. I'm trying to figure out my way. I can't prove nothing to them all the time. I don't need them to figure me out. All I got to do is just be patient and do what was in my ability, my boundaries. I don't need to outstep my boundaries. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. You didn't right. feel me? No. You can't you feel me. I can't put the expectation on you. I don't always feel me, understand me. So that's wrong. Be humble. Acknowledge him in all your ways. When I do wrong, I say something wrong to offend you, forgive me. I got to say it right away, get it over with. Mm -hmm. If I offend somebody at work, look, if, if they persecute me, look at God trying to strengthen me to show them who I serve. I say I believe, I'm walking with it. Well, teach them. They don't know. Right. They don't know why they're doing that, why they're doing that to me. Let, let your light shine among men. They might glorify your father here. It's real, man. I experience it all the time, 24 7. But I asked for it. I wanted to be a preacher when I was six, but I didn't know the price I had to pay. Much wisdom, much grief, much sorrow. 
Ain't no other way you're going to get it. But if you can just go through the fire, you'll be like, go. The first thing they do when you go to a pawn shop and take the, what they do? How do they determine if it's gold plated or, or, or what? What they do? What kind of test they take it through? When you take the jewelry to the pawn shop, how do they determine if it's real or fake? They put it through the acid test. They put the fire upon it. This is how we know if we're real or fake. We're going to go through the fire. You're going to have disagreement mm. with each other, but it's okay. You're going to be friends. But if you have a disagreement, it's just a disagreement. That don't mean you ain't got to see him no more and talk to her or talk to her or whatever. That's I don't right. want to go to work. I, I don't want to go to work because they stressing me out on the job. You feel me? They ain't receiving me with my full potential. And I don't know why I don't want to go to work. I got to understand why. Why I don't want the job? Because something ain't right. And I got to acknowledge it. I ain't going to sell my soul for the job. God said, I'm trying to put you over here. Or I'm trying to let you, let them know through you, let your light shine. Mm. But I'm hating on them. Because they ain't feeling me. They don't understand me. Hey, man, you got to teach them. You see how they flee? Yeah. They want a dollar, want a quarter. He could have got everything that he needed if he just would have been patient, but it's okay. You recording this? Yeah. It's okay. I'm telling the truth. It's all right. I thank God for you. Y'all are blessing to me. A true blessing. I ain't got nothing to hide. My burdens are heavy, but when I'm weak, he's strong through me. He speaks through me. The weaker I get, the more frustrated I get with my life. And I did this, I did that. Then the more he speaks through me, the more he takes control of me. Amen. That's just what he wants you at. Get frustrated. Amen. That's when he gonna speak through you. But you gotta, you, he gotta get you in that point where ain't nowhere else to go but to him. He said, those that I love, I correct them. I chastise them. When you go to jail, it's called the Department of Correction, Rehabilitation. <laughs> but we get mad at the correction. He said, if I didn't love you, I would correct you. Mm. He could have took our life. Amen? Amen? He could take the life. But he corrected me. I just thank God for y'all. I see it in your eyes, but this is for Solomon X. Solomon was the wisest man that lived. He had everything that man could desire. But one thing God said, leave the fire women alone. But he couldn't understand why he had a desire for the fire women. But see, the Lord knew that they were going to turn his heart against him. They were going to make him idol worship and build a God. But he didn't understand it. And I'm going to say this, the preacher, he searched the world out. He said, I want to know the the, the basis behind wisdom and knowledge and understanding and foolishness. See, you can't know wisdom and knowledge and you be a fool. But we don't want to be foolish. That's the only way you're going to get it. You got to be a fool first. How are you going to know a fool when you see a fool? How are you going to know foolishness if you haven't been foolish? That's right. Foolishness, it comes with, it's painful. Because we think we all of that. We got a lot of abilities we can create. We can send man to the moon. We can be inventors, but we're limited. If I understand that I'm limited, then that's when God takes control and gives me the wisdom that I, I desire. Humility. Be humble. If you don't understand your purpose, ask God. But ask him in sincerity. What's my purpose, God? Did you ever ask that question? What's my purpose? Why I'm here? What am I meant to do? But sometimes he can't tell us all at once. It might be too much. But be sincere. He's like you can clearly see that God is speaking through him to get this message out to us. One of the biggest takeaways that I grasped from this was enjoying the journey. Seriously. The conviction in his words definitely rattled my spirit, man. You can clearly see that he's been able to accumulate wisdom through his journey. And it touched me so deeply that I had to share it with my kingdom family. This is definitely a message for everybody, but especially 
to the youngs that's still searching and seeking to the young a generation, I meant to say. You know, I've been asking God to just humble my spirit, and he spoke on haters. Oh, man. So if I'm just being blunt, I've been very, very fortunate within this YouTube community to be able to accumulate you all, this fan base that I have, and this platform that I've been able to build for a couple of years. And the reason why I just got to humble my spirit because even though I was finding success, I still found myself kind of just upset you know, uh, at the position of success that I was having. Oh, man, this guy's stealing my thumbnails. Oh, man, this guy's stealing my titles. Oh, man, this guy's just stealing my whole concept. And not realizing that, yo, Blitz, I put you in this position for a reason, man. In no way, shape, or form am I saying I'm at the top of the list in terms of YouTube and then like that. But I had to humble my spirit and realize, like, yo, man, like, bro, first of all, would you rather it be the other way around? Second of all, I need to enjoy the burden of being an inspiration. It's not always the best feeling. And I know that sounds like a contradiction, but that's the reason why I prayed and I'm praying constantly god please humble my spirit in no way shape or form do i want to look down on any man woman anybody you know for my success or their success lack of or any of that then i realized you know going to church i realized that being upset about that type of stuff in terms of the youtube world is the result of me not counting my own blessings honestly what do i look like being able to accumulate blessings that I've never seen before in my life, but I can't enjoy them because I'm comparing them to that of somebody that's in the same field or the lack of somebody, you know, uh, not having it and I'm not having my humble spirit about it. When I tell y'all God chin check me hard, chin check me hard. Y'all seen my journey? I went from doing really, really well to bro, yo, Blitz, what's happening? To know that this video is more than eight years old or seven to eight years old at this point, and it's just now making its rounds, man. God is good. I wonder if y'all even noticed that it started to rain once he said he wanted to be a preacher at the age of six. I mean, it was pouring down and he didn't get wet even a little bit. I mean, you can argue that they probably was up under like one of those, uh, I don't even know what you call them. Uh, the, you know, when you were under a gas station pump, they got the big ceiling in the front. I don't even know what that's called. I feel ignorant. But y'all know what I mean. This was and still is for so many people. A profound message that needs to be heard around the world. It makes me think of this Kanye West song called Drive Slow, Homie. And on a remix with uh, T.I., one of my favorite lines is he said, Life's about who makes it, not about who makes it the fastest. Making it could be our subjective, but in the end, we should be trying to make it for God. Whatever that making it is through his eyes is. Another takeaway I learned about patience when he was talking about another homeless man that was there, you know, asking for change and things of that nature. But he said um, he could have gotten everything he wanted if he would have just been patient. And then how he went on to say that he prays to God just to give him his portion of the day, not even in no greed way. You know, as people, we can be greedy. God, I need you to do this. I need you to do even bargain. If you do this, I won't do this. You know, I really want to know where is he at right now? <laughs> and then how he said to his friend that, you know, they don't know the only God that they know is through you. It made me think about my babies and how when I was a kid, my mom and my father instilled God in me and took me to the church. And my children are just now getting that. Me realizing I had a conversation with my wife like, yo, I can tell them about God all day, all day, but they need to experience him. This is one of those messages that. I can listen to daily, man. Like he said, man, I have nothing to hide. My burdens are heavy. Please, y'all, go check on somebody today. Go check on a friend. Check on a family member. Call on somebody whom you've been upset that ain't called you in the last couple of months. Oh, they ain't checked on me. I ain't you calling, man. Check on them. You could be literally saving their life. God bless you.